your screen. So have you logged in with laptop or uh, mobile? Sir, right now I log in in mobile, sir. So if you can log in via laptop only, then I can help you out. Okay, sir. Anyone has any question? Well, laptop is required right now. Sir, I shared the error in your WhatsApp, sir. Okay. So, well, uh, the very next time, whenever you are going to ask question, be ready with laptop because you need okay. to log in and you need to share your screen in order to fix that. Okay. Okay, got it. So, I hope you have logged in with laptop as well, right? Teja, you are host now, you can share your screen. Hello, sir, I am admin, sir. Yes, you are. You can share your screen. Sir. But uh, I shut down, like I closed that section, sir. Right now, I just... One minute. Hello. Yeah, teacher. Sorry, is it visible, sir? My screen. Yes. Can you uh, can you once again log into this machine? Sir, I terminated the mission, sir. Okay, so there is a particular file known as slash root dot bash rc. Okay, sir. There are two errors, like some inverted commas are additionally added into this particular file. That's the only error. Okay, okay. Thank you. Some aliases are defined in, into that particular file, and those are creating this error. This can easily be fixed after removing these inverted commas, which you can easily see in the message. Okay. Moreover, one more error is here, some syntax error in line number 15. If you ever see this kind of error once again, what you can do here is you can open that particular file and try to comment that particular line which is throwing error. Okay. These are just syntax error, nothing else. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, guys. So, is my screen visible? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Then, once again, I'm going to connect to that particular machine which we have already created. Okay, uh, in the meanwhile, let me ask you any question from user management because we have al uh, almost completed that section. Anyone has any question related to user management? I'm good with that. Sir, in real time, like uh, uh, most of the problems we face in user management, like uh, reset password and password, expired like uh, giving separate permissions or specific permissions like this type of uh, errors uh, we can troubleshoot sir okay so most of time which is usually seen like users password are expired second thing when user is trying to log in so maybe the id is disabled or logged because of some wrong password entry and Sometimes disk space is not available on the server. That's why user is not able to perform anything. Some other user has deleted the particular files for any user. So these are gen these are some basic issues which we have to troubleshoot. Most of the errors are 
रिलेटेड टू पासवर्ड एंड परमिशन पासवर्ड पासवर्ड एंड लॉगिन इश्यूज ओके लेट अस से अ यूजर इज ट्राइंग टू लॉग इन बट सर्विस इज नॉट रनिंग ऑन टू दैट पर्टिकुलर सर्वर यस ओके सो नाउ लेट मूव ऑन टू डिस्क मैनेजमेंट right okay so uh, what is disk volume sir volume okay so wherever we want to store our data that particular hardware is known as disk right first of all like how do we check that how many disks are associated with this particular operating system so i'm going to tell you a couple of commands which are going to be useful d of space hyphen h sir pardon d of <coughs> space hyphen h sir f disk okay d of hyphen h command is basically utilized in order to check that how many file systems are mounted and where along with its utilization so over here uh, like as output of this particular command what do we see there is a particular kind of dev temp fs this is file system type this is temp fs once again this is temp fs now if you see the particular device beginning with this slash dev this is actually a partition or you can call that a piece of a complete disk which is associated with this particular server this is another partition this is third partition so overall we have three partitions on this particular operating system okay so now when we talk about that these three are available for example if i need to increase the disk space or i need to add another disk so how to do that that particular thing we are going to see today okay one more interesting thing i would like to tell you and that is let us say i need to check that how many disks are associated it could be possible that these three are visible these three partition out of this x slash dev x v d a this is the particular disk name x v d a as you see like numbers 1 2 3 4 these are the partition number right but when we are talking about that this particular server may have some other partition associated with it so now what to do in order to check that we will run a command f disk hyphen l l for list f disk means file system disk so right now if you see there is only one disk available the overall size of this particular disk is 10 gb these many bytes are there and these many sectors okay so why do we have different calculation mechanism let us say we have tracks we have sectors we have bytes we have seen the particular size in gb as well why multiple things so sometimes what happens when we are allocating the disk space sometimes a person may ask okay i need these many sectors so this is pure mathematical calculation like if 10 gb has these many bytes and these many sectors so you guys can do easily mathematical calculation like how many bytes are required to create one sector are we clear with that and if you do if you go one line down units how it is being calculated sectors of 1 1 into 512 bytes what does that mean that if you multiply this value into 512 this will become this value and if you convert these many bytes into gb then this will become 10 gb are we clear with this yes sir okay now once again we have a particular command which we want to run and the command here is that is known as lsblk now what is this particular particular command going to do for example a particular disk is associated with the server but that is not mounted yet let me repeat it again a particular disk is attached with this particular server but the disk is not mounted then what to do in this particular case we can check that particular option with the help of lsblk command right guys lsblk okay yes sir if you want to move ahead so let us attach one more disk here quickly because without attaching a disk we shall not be able to perform further practicals 
And guys, if you are not aware of AWS and you want to perform this practical, so let me tell you one thing. We can easily attach a disk to this particular server, but we need to keep two things in mind. First of all, we need to be very sure that in which particular availability zone this machine is created. And where we can check the availability zone? Okay, this is the availability zone, AP South 1A. This is availability zone for this particular EC2 machine. And whenever we are going to create a volume, so this volume should be created in the same group. The volume or the particular disk which we are going to create should be created into the same availability zone where our EC2 machine is running. Now, we have three availability zones in Mumbai region because right now we are working in Mumbai region. So if you see, there is one volume available, type is GP3, size is 10 GB, and uh, this is available in AP South 1, and this is in use. This is the same disk which we were checking here. This is the same disk. Okay, now what we are going to do, we are going to create new volume. Type is going to remain GP3. One more, uh, usually, like if you are uh, facing an interview question for uh, AWS, then this question might come up that what are the different type of disks available on AWS which can be associated with EC2 machine. So what are the types here, guys? Like we have GP3, we have GP2, IO1, IO2, SC1, ST1, and, and Magnetic. These are seven different type of EBS volumes available. So whenever you get time, I have already created a couple of videos on to all the particular specialties and uh, like where to utilize what kind of volume you can check YouTube channel for this. And right now, if you talk about, so we are going to go with GP3. The size, I'm not going to keep that big. I'm going to take only 10 GB of disk space. Then after, if you talk about availability zone, so as we already checked, the machine is running in which availability zone, guys? Yeah. AP South A, uh, 1A. Yes, AP South 1A. This is the particular availability zone where our machine is created. So guys, if you want to encrypt this volume, you can do that right away. Just after clicking, the, clicking on this and you can use either default KMS key management, uh, key management service or you can create your own custom keys. So if someone is going to ask that, do you use default key or uh, like uh, customer managed? The best option here is always to use customer managed keys. Otherwise, this may result into some kind of compliance issues okay i'm not going to encrypt it right now so i'm going to hit button create volume so just see the volume has successfully been created once again the size remains same now how do we know that which particular volume we have created so right now the particular volume state is creating if we refresh it maybe after a while this will show as available so all the available volumes, what does that mean? The volume has been created for you, but has not been mounted anywhere, has not, has not been associated anywhere. Right? So let us select this volume because right now we understand, or maybe uh, we can give it a name as well. Additional volume for disk management, we can give it a name as we can identify this volume later on. Now, let us select this and what we are going to do, we are going to mount it on that particular machine. We are going to attach it first. So how do we identify the machine? As soon as we will click here, so all the machines, not only one, let us say we have 100 of, 100 of machines running into this particular availability zone. So as soon as you will click here, this will display all the available servers, whether in a stop state or in running state. Now it is asking you to select a disk name. So either you can select it yourself or kernel will give it a name. Moreover, one more thing we need to check. What is the name suggested here? SDB, SDC, SDD, like any name you can select it from here, right? Multiple names could be here. But what we need to check here, one more like warning message is coming here. This is a warning kind of thing. New Linux kernel may rename your devices to slash dev xvdf to xvdp internally. Even when the device names entered here 
are shown in the details is slash dev sdf to sdp like whatever name you enter here these name may get converted once you attach the volume because where you are going to see this particular uh, disk inside the virtual machine right guys Like whatever name you want, you can select from here. But yes, this name may get changed. Okay, so let us go to that machine once again. Now, guys, the particular disk has been associated with this particular server. Now, how to check that what kind of activities has happened? So now I'm going to run a command D message. This particular command is utilized in order to check kernel logs print or control the kernel ring buffer so we will not talk about kernel rings there are multiple layers like within the system itself like CPU virtual ring we call that so right now we are not going to discuss that but yes you can easily understand that we are going to see the particular messages of kernel like what kind of message kernel is going to print let us run the command D message. So need not to go any other way. Just see BLK front. Read this particular line XVDB. So guys, when we were trying to attach the particular disk, what name did we select here? SDB. Slash dev slash SDB. Yes. But right now, what name is coming here? XVDB. XVDB. Right. So this name may get changed. So need not to worry about that. Let's go ahead. Now, after attaching the particular disk at this particular place, ls blk command, we have seen the particular disk. So guys, earlier, only one name was appearing here, dev xvda. But right now, if you see, xvdb is also available here. Moreover, if you see the particular type column, so it is showing here disk, it is showing here as part, it is showing as part and mount points. It means if you want to see like what kind of data has been placed inside this particular partition or this particular disk, then it can be found here like where it is mounted. Okay. Two are the disk and four are the partitions here. Are we clear with that guys so far? Yes, sir. sir what is RO? Read only. If it is read only, zero, no. Okay. One more thing I would I would like to tell you guys. Now we are going to check whether any partition is created inside this. So this command is saying that no partition is created because whenever partition is created, so obviously today we are going to see like how to create partition and how to format, how to mount it, everything we are going to see today. But before that, how do we get to know whether this entire disk may have been formatted? Now, this is one of the interview question, guys. Let us say I have a server. On that particular server, two different or maybe five different disks are associated. Now, I want to know whether the particular associated disk have any file system on it or not. Sir, F disk hyphen L, sir. BLK ID, sir. F disk hyphen L, but it is not showing it is formatted or not. Yes, you are right. There is a command known as BLK ID. Okay. If you can see one common thing here, like known as part. Or you uh, like type, sorry, not the part type. If you can read this particular line here, you can easily understand that this particular file system is formatted. And what is the file system type? That is XFS, okay? Once again, if you see here type, what is the particular type here? VFAT. VFAT. What is the type here? XFS. XFS. Great. And do you see any kind of like type mentioned here? Partition UUID is obviously, obviously there, but can we say, the, is this formatted? 
No, sir. No, because the type and the type exact type which we should be mentioned here is not available. So now, how do we understand this? That this particular partition is not formatted. Formatted. Okay. Okay, do you see that particular partition is coming up here like that XVDB? Is that particular name appearing here? No. Yeah. Why it is so? That partition or that disk is not formatted. Now, guys, one more thing I would like to tell you. We can format entire disk as well without creating any partition. Uh, so the BLK ID command we used to know whether that uh, disk is formatted or not. Yes, BLKID command okay. helps us out to understand whether the particular disk is formatted or not. Because see, when we are working on an operating system, so let us say there are three admin works in a particular organization and all the three guys comes usually in different shapes, right? So let us say someone associated a disk, updated onto the ticket, but the person forgot to mention that after attaching a disk onto server, whether the person ensure to format it or not. And one more thing, let us say after formatting, whether some data has been kept onto that particular disk or not, right? So before performing a very critical operation, which is known as formatting a disk, that should be taken care of very carefully. Because if you run a command MKFS, like make file system, that particular file, that particular command will wash away all the data, whatever is available, on the particular server or sorry on that particular disk which you are going to format right so when we are talking about disk formation this is really critical operation and we have to be very very careful that is why we are discussing in that level of details that before performing any operation related to formation of any disk we need to really, uh, like carefully verify that the particular disk should not have any file system created onto it are we clear with that guys yes Okay, so now there are two ways to format a disk. And what are the ways? So guys, first of all, the very first way here is I can format entire disk. That is also a viable solution here. And obviously inside AWS, it is uh, quite possible because some different concept is working in background and we get a particular disk which can be extended later on because we are working on cloud environment and that is easily doable. Otherwise, what is the another way? Let us say, when we try to build our home, so what do we do? We purchase the land. After that, we start building the, we start uh, like building the, like uh, we start the construction in order to make that particular plot into a building. Now guys, do we have a only single block within the entire home? No. There are different partitions. Let us say we call it like bedroom, we call it hall, we call it guest room, we call it, let us say parking and whatever are the other, like let's say kitchen and some other spaces. We call that, why? Because right now we cannot utilize the entire place as a hall. So we have to make different partitions into it. Moreover, whenever we want to store the data onto it, so formation is required. And before that, we talk about formation, the different file system type, utilization, like what are the like characteristics of it. So let us try to see that how do we create partitions into a particular disk. And guys, okay, let me ask you one more question. Okay, guys, so let us say, I want to utilize the complete disk as one partition. So is it mandatory to create partition inside a disk? Yes, sir. Okay. Is it mandatory? Yes, sir, can you without partition, we cannot identify, sir. Okay, let us say for identification purpose, if I give that particular part, disk a particular tag, so let us say if we see here onto this particular section, what do you see? I have given it a name, so I can easily identify that here. Yes, sir. I, I can easily identify this partition from this particular name. So why do I need to format it? Or why do, you, why do I need to create partition inside it? It can be easily identified from here. Sir, because, right. uh, 
we can use multiple types that like uh, one partition is for uh, some database team and another for another users like okay so why, why can i not do this thing let us say this is a particular mount point which is already available on the system so this particular t whatever i have replied here guys so this particular t is used in order to check the file system type if I do not use this T here, then this will not show the file system type. Rest information will be available, but if we want to check the file system type, which is used in order to format this particular disk, we can check that with the help of this T option. Okay, one more thing. Yeah, so we were talking about, so let us say, and uh, uh, by the way, tell me one thing, what are the particular units available? To store the data, let us say we have byte, we have bit, we have byte, and what are the like what is the biggest unit you know of data storage? Data byte. Okay. And GB. GB. So first of all, we have bit. Then after we have byte. MB. What what comes after byte? MB. MB. Uh, after that, uh, MB will come. For KB. KB. Aditi, after that? MB. Then? GB. GB. Then? GB. Then? GB. GB. then? Mm -hmm. So guys, these are some of the particular values which we can utilize in order to store the data like bit, byte, kb, mb, gb, terabyte, pentabyte, exabyte, yottabyte, and zettabyte. I am pretty much sure that you must have heard this word some the, like uh, some somewhere or the other. Yes, sir. Have you seen the movie Robot, Rajnikanth? Yes, sir. What was the like uh, storage capacity of that robot, Chitti? It's like a gigabyte, sir. The person used to say uh, memory one gigabyte. Yes, sir. Remember? Yes, if you sir. can recall that. Why we are discussing about that robot? Because that robot was having the biggest unit in order to store the data. So this zettabyte is the biggest unit in which we can store the data. But when we are talking about like why to create partitions. So guys, keep this thing in mind, every individual file system. And what are the file systems we have? So let us say MKFS. So yes, guys, you see here. EXT2, this is the file system type. MKFS is the command to create file system, make file system. Then after EXT2, then after we have EXT3, we have EXT4, we have FAT, we have VFAT, we have XFS, MS-DOS, we have Minix. These are different file system types we can create on Linux operating system. But guys, tell me one thing. What are the differences here? Like, while I'm going to format or create a partition, we need to select a particular file system type. And guys, keep this thing in mind. Why do we need to create a partition inside a particular disk? Because every individual file system has its own capabilities. Let me show you something. Okay, so guys, we need to be careful while selecting any kind of file system type. For example, if you want to select this one, 
ext2 stands for second extended file system type it was introduced in 1993 and guys this is one interview question as well keep this thing in mind right it was introduced in 1993 developed by kami remicard and this was developed to overcome the limitation of original ext file system ext does not have journaling feature now what is journaling this is your homework you will let me know tomorrow what is journaling on flash drive usb ext2 is recommended as it does not need to do the overhead of journaling maximum individual file size can be from 16 gb to 2 tb so guys focus on this particular line what does this mean capacity right now we are talking about the capacity of this ext2 file system like how big block of a particular disk this file system can format okay let us go back to here for a while let us say if my disk is of 1 petabyte or let us say 8 petabyte will this file system be able to format that guys will this file system be able to format that no sir why because the particular size is really huge overall ext2 file system size can be from 2 to 32 tb once again individual file can be of 2 terabyte and maximum disk which it, it can format can go up to 32 tb okay once again it remain same like ext2 and 3 remain same almost but it has some additional features like journaling order like this is like only metadata is saved into general now what is metadata data about data data about data is known as metadata so ext3 comes with this particular feature like it has journaling and what is journaling journaling has a dedicated area in file system where all the changes are tracked when the system crashes the possibility of file system corruption is less because of journaling your question has already been answered here not a problem so what kind of changes are happening on a particular file system that information is being tracked and that activity is known as journaling right and ext3 file system comes with journaling feature this has a particular feature known as like write back as well only metadata is saved in general metadata metadata might be generated either before or after content is written onto the particular disk that depends on the like uh, different os to os you can convert ext2 file system to ext3 file system directly without backup or restore like there is a particular chance that you can upgrade your ext2 file system to ext3 file system without any backup or without any restore of it like online upgrade we can call it okay let's go for ext4 file system type this is for fourth extended file system when was it introduced in 2008 supports huge individual files and overall file system size now guys maximum individual file size can be from 16 gb to 16 tb guys see the difference here what what was the maximum file size here 2 tb 2 tb to 32 tb file system could be could be up to 32 tb and individual file could go from 16 gb to 2 tb and what is the particular size we can store here 16 gb to 16 tb it is grown from 2 terabyte to 16 terabyte so the difference is clear yes sir yes okay one more thing if you see overall maximum ext4 like file system size is 1 exabyte now what is 1 exabyte 1 exabyte is equal to 1024 petabyte one like one pet pen dabadi equal to 1024 terabyte because usually we understand tb only most of us are aware of maximum terabyte so when we are talking about like what level of formation it can do 
like how much big chunk of a particular hard disk we can format with the help of this particular file system. So what is the size here, guys? One, one PB, sir. No, one EB. You read this particular highlighted text. Okay, sir. Okay, one more uh, interview question. Let us say if I create a directory here. I go inside select like data. I created one more directory. Let us say like if you see. I have created three subdirectories here, like data, images, and photos. So, how many subdirectories can I create inside this particular file system? So that sub like sub like subdirectory could be up to sixty four thousand, wherein this was only thirty two thousand subdirectories inside like in within your ext two and three file system. So, are we able to understand the difference here? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, now once again, you can also mount ext3 as ext4 file system without having to upgrade it. Moreover, read this part line very, very carefully. This is going to be a key point here. Like multi-block allocation, delayed allocation, general link checksum. Fast FSCK, FSCK stands for file system check. Like if any file system seems to be corrupted. So ext4 can perform a faster check in comparison to ext2 or 3. Then after, all you need to know is that these things. New features have improved the performance and reliability of file system when compared to ext3. So overall, why we are spending this much time on reading this particular step? Because when selecting a file system for our operating system, where we want to keep our data. So we should be aware of it, that what are going to be advantages or disadvantages of a particular file system we are going to select. Moreover, as of today, most of operating system comes with XFS file system. Now, what is XFS? This is an extension of extend file system, XFS. This is always, this is going to give you high performance, 64 bit general link file system. Moreover, XFS was merged into Linux kernel in around when? Around 2002 and like 2009 for Red Hat. Whenever you see that XFS file system is being used, so that it should be running with kernel version number 5.4 or maybe higher. Then after guys, if you talk about XFS supports maximum size of a file up to eight exabyte, and guys, what was the size in uh, in ext4? One exabyte. One. So it has extended the capacity up to eight times. If you could store only one exabyte data, or you, if you could format only one exabyte partition with ext4, so now you can format a single partition of eight exabyte. Okay, then what next? There is some comparison of XFS file system. Is XFS file system can't be shrunk and poor performance with deletion of large number of files. Okay, what does that mean? So XFS file system has a drawback as well. Like if you have created a partition of 2000 GB or let us call it two terabyte. Now you want to release some disk space then it cannot be done. You cannot reduce the file system size if you have already formatted your disk with XFS file system. But if you try to do, then the chance of like uh, corruption will be there. Your disk may go corrupted. Are we clear with this, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Any question on this? Sir, why do you need file system, sir? Okay, very good. So is there anyone who would like to answer the question? 
Like, why do we create a file system? Or store the data. Okay, very good. So we create file system in order to create or uh, in order to store data. Okay, let us say when we go to library. So what do we see? There is a particular index table. We can easily identify, for example, you belong to science. You can directly go to a particular section where all the books related to science are, are kept. For example, if you if you want to go to art section, commerce section, or maybe some math, math mathematical books you would like to read. So there are some separate sections available, right? Yes, sir. So why these things are done? Otherwise, what we could have done here is, let us say, we could have created only big, one big room. We could have stored all the books there itself. So yes. do you really feel that it would have been easier to identify a book? No, sir. Because let us say if there are thousands of books and there is no sequencing, there is no ordering where the files are kept or where the particular book is kept, what we you are looking for, you may spend hours and days in order to identify one book. But if these books are indexed in proper manner, for example, you go to library, you have a thought in your mind that today you are going to read maybe some novels. Hmm. Fine. There are two, you reach out to novel section. Now there are two subsections there. One, that you want to read the language in, you want to read novel in which language? Maybe Hindi or maybe English, right? Further, there are two sections. You want to read the latest one or the oldest one. There is a further like sub-segregation. Uh, sub so when we want to keep our data into, into this particular order, so in order to maintain that order or that identification, we need to format a particular disk using that particular file formation. We should be able to track the location of our file, where the file is created, where the file is located onto that operating system. So in a nutshell, you can understand that in order to keep your data onto that disk, you need to format your operating system, your, your disk. Okay. Are we clear with that now? Yes, sir. Now, there is a question which I have. Can we keep our data into operating system without formatting or like into a particular disk without formatting it? No, sir. And why is that so? Because we cannot identify where we have to uh, keep, uh, keep the data. Okay. So, Rakeshji, any it's comment on a, that? Yeah, it's need a file system to store the data. So, direct there, it's not possible. Aditi, any comment on that? Sir, if we want the to design in that way, if we, we want a format, it won't be able to store the data. So, that's the formatting is required. Okay, very good. So, once again, let me rephrase your whatever comment you all, all guys have given. These are fantastic. Let me rephrase it. So, first of all, if there is no file system available, we cannot mount our disk. Mount means we cannot make a disk accessible in order to keep some data into it. So first of all, file system creation is mandatory to mount a file system. Only after creating a file system into a disk or into a partition, we shall be able to mount it or to make it accessible. Are we clear with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Let us move ahead. Okay. So guys, if you remember, we created or we associated a particular disk here. Yes, sir. XVDB. So today we are going to see like how to format a disk, how to mount it, how to make it permanently accessible. Tomorrow we will see how to create partitions, how to manage the partitions, what are the different type of partitions, because today we have spent good enough amount of time in order to like associate a disk, understanding like what are the different type of storage like the capacity we have what are the differences between different file system type if i need to select a file system type what are the basis of that like on what earth do i need to decide okay i'm i'm operating with rhl 7 8 or 9 or whatever so what particular file system will be appropriate for my operating system what is going to be the size of that disk which i need to format 
आर वी क्लियर विद दैट सर हाउ वी नो सर दैट दिस दिस का इज नॉट फॉर्मेटेड और नॉट हैव फाइल सिस्टम बीएलकेटी कमांड कैन हेल्प यू विद दैट यस सर बट इन दिस सेक्शन हाउ वी आइडेंटिफाई सर सो इफ यू सी हियर एक्स वी डी बी डिस्क इज एसोसिएटेड एंड नॉट लिस्टेड डाउन अंडर दिस पर्टिकुलर कमांड्स आउटपुट that means the particular disk is associated but is not formatted so let us say we have this particular command mkfs.xfs or you can run this command this way as well hyphen t xfs so whatever is the way you would like to execute this command mkfs.xfs like this way or the other way hyphen t t for type then xfs so how would you like to utilize this command guys Well, my preferred way is this one. M K F S dot X F S now defines as dev X V D. What is the particular disk name which we want to format? X V D B. X V D. Very good. Now see, metadata equal to dev X V D B. I size means I note size this. A G count. Ag size, blocks, sectors, attributes, and rest of detail. Obviously, like you need to read mkfs command in order to understand this output. But yes, overall, you can see that disk has been formatted. And like okay, Teja, now we need to see like whether the disk has been formatted or not. You will see some differences this time. Yes. Just read this particular line, guys. User ID. So it, not user ID. It, it is known as U U ID. U U ID. Universal unique identifier. So what is it? Universal, Universal unique, unique identifier. Okay. What is the what is the name written here, guys? Earlier it was not available. Like I can scroll it up a little, and you can see this particular line was not earlier was not available, but now it is clearly. Yes. Why? Because we. But from only one option here, one uh, one thing we did we did that is known as MKFS creating XFS. file system. Like we tried to create a file system here with this particular command, and now this is also added in under the output of this particular command. What does that mean? Just read this particular line. Type is Type equal to XFS. 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 Are we clear with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now what next? So guys, we need to make it accessible. Okay, let us say I want to put some data onto this particular disk. So how can I put? So let us say to folder known as. Let us say there is a folder known as slash etc. So I want to copy this etc folder into that particular disk. So we have to create uh, any diary uh, directory. Then we have to mount. and then we have to copy okay what we have to copy sir, and how do we sir uh, mkd uh, make okay let me tell you one thing guys the directory data is already created we have already couple of files and folders here and guys keep this thing in mind okay let me perform the practical first then i'll explain okay the command in order to make a particular disk accessible is known as mount what do we want to mount slash dev xvdb and where do we want to mount it data. slash data is the command clear to yes, mount yes, is the command this is the particular disk which we want to mount and this is a particular location where we want to mount it okay guys remember one thing before mounting this particular disk onto this particular location there were three folders available like image like photos and this data itself so guys where are these photos right now 
where are these images the where where, where have these folders gone data sir but there is nothing in it sir there is a previous direct uh, disk aditi any comment on this not sure rakesh ji can we go one step back like data uh, before that cd no why it is so let us say there is a particular document which is placed on the table right let us say there is one object placed on the table that object is visible to me what if i place another layer of some other object of same shape and size so will that underlying uh, object will be visible to me no sir the same thing is happening here why it is so let us say if i go inside this, this particular folder now image is available inside that image all the things are available whatever i have created so far so why did, why did we perform this particular practical guys we need to be very careful while mounting a particular disk onto any uh, folder or any directory why it is so we let us say there is a particular file f allocate and uh, for example hyphen l 4g so how much amount of disk space is is, is gone from here 4gb okay let me do one more thing demo 1 So ninety three percent is utilized. This only this much is free. Now, guys, keep this thing in mind. Let us move a step back. So why I am trying to explain you this thing? Sometimes what happens that people give you scenario based question like what kind of troubleshooting have you done related to a particular disk management? So this is a real use case. In fact, I spent a couple of hours in order to fix this this kind of issue. What was the issue? So someone mounted a particular disk. Let us say slash dev x v d b onto slash data. So guys, what is the size of this data folder? Eleven GB. Eleven GB. Okay. Let us let us see uh, ten as uh, ten. So the size of this particular point, guys. There is 10. also one difference. This is human readable format. Capital H. It means this calculates. The value of one GB is equal to how many MB? One zero two four. One zero two four. But this calculates as one thousand. Okay, sir. Like straightforward. Let us say eighty GB. How many MB is MB are there? You will have to you will have to calculate something. But if it is eighty GB into thousand, straight calculation. Okay. Sir. Over here, the value of one GB is equal to one zero two four MB. That's the difference. So, guys, if I have to troubleshoot this particular disk space, where has this space gone? Sir, I was given a particular server to troubleshoot, where space was not visible anywhere. I I was given a chance to reboot the server. I did that, but nothing happened. This space did not come up. Because see, guys, you guys are seeing this practical before you. That's why you shall be able to understand the scenario here. So, guys, will this data come after reboot? No, sir. Will I be able to reclaim this space after rebooting the server? No, sir. And why that? Why that so, Rakesh ji? They locate to some uh, somewhere, so we just cannot. Uh... Or reclaim that after even after the list. But where is it allocated? Okay, so that command we have to add it. Okay. 
Okay. So is this interesting uh, issue to fix or not? Yes, we can do that. Indeed. Okay. So guys, tell me one thing now. Okay, it's 9.27. So let us do one thing, guys. I am going to keep this machine the way it is right now. And we will continue from this point only. Okay, sir. Because see, like, if I try to perform this very quickly, then it will be really, like, you can call that, okay, it will okay. not be, like, uh, really drill yeah. down. Yeah. Will be difficult to understand a little. But yes, let us pause here. I'll stop the machine and we will continue from the right, this state only, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure. Any feedback for the today's session, guys? Yes, sir. As oh. usual, awesome, sir. Awesome, sir. Awesome. Super. Okay. Any other one would like to give any feedback for this session? That was clearly a deep dive into the topic which we had conducted today. Okay. So, okay, guys, thank you so very much for your time. Sir, can I ask one more question, sir? Yeah, please go ahead. Sir, like in security group, if I want to allow like uh, two users, sir, like uh, so then... So we do slash... not allow users into security group. Security group is kind of firewall where you allow the source, which is a particular IP address, a particular IP address range, a particular subnet, or whatever. We do okay. not allow specific users into a particular security group. Okay, sir, I want to allow like uh, two... Like two IPs or three IPs, sir. Then you can do that. Yes, sir. Two IPs means slash 30, sir. Slash 32. No, 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 not that way. So, uh, there is a particular little uh, change here. Like, you want to allow or you want to define. Mm. I'll explain it tomorrow. Don't worry. I got your question. Okay, thank you. Sir. Like thank you, everyone. Question. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.